well. Since one of you asks me for a tale of adventure on the high seas, and the other of you asks me for a tale about horses and their nice manes, <laughs> I believe I have a story that will satisfy you both, professors. <laughs> it took place when I was a young man and restless to make my mark upon the world. Lindbergh had just become the first man to cross the Atlantic by air, and this inspired me. Perhaps I could yet be the first to cross it by sea. <laughs> Eventually, a little research convinced me that that ship had quite literally sailed. <laughs> what then could I be the first to cross the Atlantic by? Hot air balloon? Huh, too easy. Train? Too difficult. <laughs> Then what about by horseback? <laughs> At first, the idea seemed like madness, but was it? Yes. <laughs> but was it? After all, horses can swim, can they not? And the Atlantic is made of water, is it not? <laughs> Therefore, why should not a horse swim the Atlantic with me on its back, carrying me to New York and the history books? <laughs> and as luck would have it, I still owned my own childhood horse. Mr. Floofy Whiskers. <laughs> this curious name, I should explain, came about because what I really wanted when I was a boy was a kitten, but my parents gently explained to me that we couldn't have a cat because we had too much space. <laughs> and I would have to have a horse instead. A disappointment then, but a blessing now. Come, Mr. Floofy Whiskers, I cried. If we are to cross the Atlantic, we must get in training. Meow! <laughs> Oh, yes, I, I also raised him to think he was a cat. <laughs> Training was an arduous affair. For a start, the staff of Camden Public Swimming Baths would keep on insisting <laughs> that they had a no-horse policy. In vain did I try to explain that this was in aid of a landmark maritime expedition, and in vain did Mr. Floofy Whiskers try to explain that he was, in fact, a cat. Yo! <laughs> And then, as if this wasn't enough, we were interrupted mid-training swim by a woman from the RSPCA. Excuse me, I'm a woman from the RSPCA. She said, which is how I knew. <laughs> how can I help you, said I? Uh, we have received reports that you are planning to make a horse swim to America. That's right, yes. Can we get you anything? <laughs> no! The point is, you can't do that. It's Cruel? Why are the... Oh, no, I see. No, you misunderstand, madam. He won't be alone. I'll be riding on his back the whole way. <laughs> that makes it worse. I don't see why. You do realise horses can swim. Yes, but only about a hundred yards. Ah, but that's where the training comes in. Mr Floofy Whiskers here can already do 110 yards. And that's just from me putting some tuna-flavoured sugar lumps at the end of the pool. <laughs> He'll be up to 3,412 miles in no time at all. No, no. This is cruel and barbaric aquatic horsemanship, and we cannot allow it. Oh, very well then. How about if I take a whole team of horses, and then after I've done a hundred yards on each one, just change onto the next? <laughs> yes, that sounds fine. <laughs> so that's what we did. A fortnight later, I set out from Southampton Docks, mounted on Mr. Floofy Whiskers, and accompanied by my support vessel, HMS Impermeable. <laughs> Carrying my food, water, compass, and 1,056 backup horses. <laughs> After 100 yards, we all stopped, and I dismounted and swam round in circles whilst Mr. Floofy Whiskers was winched aboard and a fresh horse was lowered into the ocean for me to mount. This process was repeated every 100 yards, and in this manner, we crossed the Atlantic. <laughs> For a full account of our crossing and our encounters with icebergs, pirates, colossal squid, and seahorses, <laughs> which of course had never seen a real horse before, and so were understandably freaked out, <laughs> you will have to read my memoir on the subject. Changing horses in midstream, I see now why they say not to do it. Anyway, for now, suffice it to say that nine years later, we had almost reached New York. 
In fact, we were exactly one mile out from the edge of the docks when a dinghy appeared before us and a customs officer hailed us through a megaphone. What is the purpose of your visit to the United States? No reason, really. I hailed back, not needing a megaphone, because I am English and can project. <laughs> no reason. No, didn't particularly want to come, actually. Ghastly place from what I've heard. Uh, I just wanted to cross the Atlantic, though, you see, and you happen to be on the other side of it. Okay, do you have anything to declare? No, no, nothing at all. It's just me, a battleship, and 1,057 horses. <laughs> Sir, you can't bring livestock in the United States. I'm going to have to ask you to turn around and go back the way you came. I'd really, really rather not do that. Sorry, sir, you do not have permission to come any closer. I'm afraid at this point I lost my temper. Is that so? I roared. Well, sir, a fig for your permission. This is His Majesty's battleship HMS Impermeable, and we are entering your harbour. Permission or no? At this point, the captain of the Impermeable spoke up. No, 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 no. I'm, I'm afraid I'm not sure I have the authority to do that. Authority? Cried I, good lord, man. Do we no longer encourage you to act on your initiative in the Royal Navy? They do, sir, yes, up to a point. But they don't really encourage us to launch a unilateral invasion of the United States. <laughs> Very well, said I. You and your ship may stay here, if you please. Who needs you? I have enough horses here for an entire cavalry regiment. Saddle them all up. I shall ride them to New York. What? What, all of them? Yes, all of them. What, widthways? No, obviously not widthways. Don't be absurd, man. <laughs> have them stacked. <laughs> Well, my orders were obeyed. <laughs> and I began to mount. In some ways, clambering up the side of the teetering stack of over a thousand horses was the hardest part of the adventure. When I finally reached the summit of the horse stack, lower level clouds wisping around my head, I was pleased to discover that Mr. Floofy Whiskers was the uppermost horse. I tried not to think too much about the bottommost horse. <laughs> I patted him and fed him some pilchard flavoured hay. <laughs> well, here goes then, old lad, I said to him. New York or bust. Now then, giddy up. This, I concede, was a tactical error. <laughs> I'll say one thing for sitting on top of a stack of 1,057 horses as they topple towards the Atlantic Ocean. It takes longer than you'd think. <laughs> I occupied the time doing some mental arithmetic. <laughs> Suppose the average height of the horses was five feet, then 157 horses made the stack 5,285 feet tall, or one mile and five feet. And suppose that the stack was falling forward with total rigidity, and that I had been precisely accurate when I had estimated we were one mile away from the edge of the docks. Well, if all of these calculations were correct, and really, how could they not be? <laughs> it seemed to me that while 1,056 of my horses were about to land harmlessly in the water, Mr. Floofy Whiskers and myself were about to smash into the New York dock front. It was a nasty moment. But then again, I reflected, as the ground whistled up to meet me. If there is one thing to be said for a horse that thinks it's a cat, <laughs> they always land on their hooves. <laughs> Good night! <laughs> 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 <laughs>